So here we're looking at the APA style. This is on the APA web page. You can find this very easily. You can also just go to apastyle.apa.org and then I am down in the paper format section. This is freely available and easy to find. Now they are of course correct because this is the American Psychological Association. This is their style. And as we can see here, we're talking about the paper format from chapter two of the publication manual. Now, as we come through this, let's look at the order of pages. The order of pages is as follows. Title page, abstract, text, references, footnotes, tables, figures, appendices. All papers, including student papers, include a title page, the text, and the references. Student papers generally do not include an abstract unless requested. I do not want you to create an abstract. You need to have your title page, your text, and your references. If you use footnotes, tables, figures, or appendices, those are to follow the references as they should according to APA. You must use your title page, your text, and your references. Do not use an abstract. Okay. If you use tables and figures, you note ta see table one and table one will appear after your references. It goes towards the back of the paper. Tables and figures are embedded within text when they after they are within the text after they are first mentioned or called out. Okay, now what I'm asking you to do is the second part where it says or or place each table and then each figure on a separate page after the references. That's what I want you to do. Instead of embedding the tables and figures within the text, I want you to place it after the references. Both are correct for APA style, and I've made the decision for you. I want to find those type of things at the end, if you use them. Now, you do not have to use tables and figures, or appendices, or footnotes. The only things you must use are the title page, the text, and the references. Now, setting up your title page, I provided some on the um, on the slideshow, but here is an example of a student title page. Now you notice that in the header, on the left side, is the page number. Below that bolded and centered is the paper title. Then maybe two full enters. Okay, so they hit enter at the end of the title and then enter once more before the author's name, the affiliation, the course number, the instructor's number, and finally the due date. Note, student papers do not include a running head unless requested by the instructor or institution. I do not request a running head. I want you to do it this way. If you include a running head, you're doing it wrong. Okay, so your paper title, all of this is available to you on the APA site. Once you hit the words professional title page, stop reading. Next, fonts. APA permits a variety of fonts. For this paper and for this annotated bibliography, I want you to use 12 point Times New Roman. The APA style does allow for Calibri 11, Arial 11, 
Lucinda Sands, Unicode Alenda, uh, 10, Georgia 11, and some stuff from LaTeX. Now, odds are really good that none of you know how to set up LaTeX, and that's fine. One of the options is still Times New Roman 12. Because that is the academic standard, and you should get used to using it, that's the one I'm requesting. If you use a different font, you're wrong. Now the reason these fonts are usually the ones that APA will allow for is because they have access to math symbols, Greek symbols, and those things are used throughout the disciplines as uh, part of how we write. Now there are exceptions. Now, of course, you're supposed to use the same font throughout your entire paper, just as you did in MLA. But here there are exceptions for figures. Within figure images, you use a sans serif font with a type size between 8 and 11 points. A sans serif font is one that doesn't have the little flags on it. Okay. The font that you see on your screen now is sans serif. It doesn't have the little flags like Times New Roman or Georgia do. If you are presenting computer code, so if you're taking your computer science course and you need to turn in your programming, you use a monospace font like 10 Lucenda or Courier New 10. And then in footnotes, you're going to use default font settings. It'll probably be smaller than the rest of the text, but that's how it's supposed to appear when doing footnotes. You probably won't be doing footnotes for this paper, but you need to be aware of these differences for future classes. Going back to the paper format, your page header. Because you're running a student paper, the page header should consist of a page number only and nothing else. Line spacing of course is 2.0. Your margins are standard. You must indent the first line of every paragraph by pressing tab once. Paragraphs are to be aligned on the left hand side and so on. Now there is an option here for headings. Some instructors will want headings. I am telling you, do not use headings. This paper is not going to be long enough to justify headings and subheadings. Okay, so do not use headings. Now also on the APA site are some sample papers that you can peruse. I will put the annotated student sample paper and the student sample paper both on our Blackboard shell so that you can examine them at your leisure. But remember that not everything in those is going to appear in your own paper. I don't want headings. And so on. Okay, There are things you're not supposed to do. So pay attention to my instructions. Now again, to find this style guide, you're just going to go to apastyle.apa.org. You have an APA section in Writer's Ref. You also have an APA section in Norton. Use those to reference it. But if there's ever a contradiction between what is written in your book and what it says here on the 7th edition's uh, website, then the website is correct. Finally, remember to use Zotero Citation Manager. If you do not do that, you're making your life more difficult than it needs to be. I am not to blame if you want to make your life hard. Now, if you have any questions about any of this, then please 
email me. Do not use Course Messenger. Some of you are still using Course Messenger. Stop doing that. Email me. A-N-E-L-S-O-1-7 at epcc.edu. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc., that's where to get a hold of me. The reason not to use Course Messenger, it takes its sweet time. Email is faster and more dependable. Okay, that's what needs to be done. Please look through all the resources I put up this week. It's important.